Hello everyone, my name is Charles Lamana and I'm the Corporate Vice President of Business Applications at Microsoft that covers Dynamics 365 applications as well as Power Apps, Power Automate, and Power Virtual Agent. I'm incredibly grateful to be here for the Power Platform French Summit to have this opportunity to be the closing keynote and cover off some of the most exciting low-code developments that we have. And for folks that aren't deeply familiar with Power Platform, maybe this is your first session, I'll cover some of the background and motivations and trends. And for folks that are experts, I have a whole lot of great roadmap and exciting upcoming capabilities. So without further ado, let's jump into the presentation. When I talk about Power Platform, I like to always start from two important metrics that capture the major trends in the industry. If you look at the two most important metrics to frame how we think about low-code development at Microsoft, it's these two numbers. The first is there's unprecedented digital demand. Over 500 million new applications need to be built in the next few years. And this is across all parts of every company and every industry around the globe. And even if we were to go address this problem by hiring an army of developers and coders to go build this massive swelling digital demand, we couldn't do it because there's not enough developers. There's a 4 million developer shortfall by 2025, according to IDC. So we have unprecedented demand for digital solutions and development, and we have unprecedented supply constraints when it comes to developers to go create them. And in the past, we thought that the way we can go address this is by teaching everybody how to write code. Uh, this is a very West Coast of the US centric viewpoint, you know, go to middle schools and high schools, teach everybody how to write code or go into marketing and finance departments and teach how everybody to write code, but it just didn't work. Instead, we have found some success with a new approach. And that new approach is how can we turn everybody into a developer with low code solutions? Low code solutions make it so everybody just that we can use PowerPoint or Excel or Word, you can also use low code can go create new amazing solutions. And at Microsoft, our low code offering is called the Microsoft Power Platform. And that spans Power BI for low code data analytics and reporting, Power Apps for low code web and mobile application development, Power Automate for low code robotic and workflow process automation, and Power Virtual Agent for low code chatbots and conversational agents. Now, whether you wanna be purely visual based, write a little bit of code and expressions, or write code first and start from a Git repo, you can do all of that on the Power Platform. And that's really important in terms of how we think low code continues to evolve in such an interesting time for software development. And that's because low code is focused on empowering everybody inside the company to contribute to digital transformation. Business users can go build their own local solutions to solve the problems that they're facing using the no-code visual-based authoring experiences. Technical but non-coding IT professionals like IT admins, they can use these same tools to build amazing solutions in a way they couldn't do it before if they had to go open up Visual Studio and write a bunch of code. And pro developers and coders can use the tools they always know and love like GitHub or Azure or Visual Studio together with Power Platform to build amazing solutions. So the entire company can now participate in and contribute to digital transformation. And in the future where every company on earth needs to have an increasing technology bent and have tech intensity, this is going to be key because you need your entire company to contribute and think technology first. That's the way the world's going and low code is a key ingredient in helping everybody transform into that new world. And we can see across the customer base for Power Platform, it's remarkable in consumer goods, in pharmaceuticals and life sciences, in energy uh, and financial services, massive Power Platform adoption around the globe. Power Apps and Power BI are number one by usage in their corresponding markets for low code and self-service business intelligence as well as app development. And we can see that 92% of the Fortune 500 now uses Power Apps and 97% of the Fortune 500 uses at least one Power Platform product. The low code revolution has been preparing for a few years now and it's finally reached mainstream. Now is the time to really go embrace all the great potential of these low code tools. And to really see that in action, I wanna play a short video from one of our customers, Coca-Cola, um, one of Coca-Cola ballers, where they've used the Power Platform to really transform uh, their business and deliver a better experience to their customers. We consider our competitive advantage, our relationships with the community, 
and the local market, grocery stores, restaurants, they are our tradition at Coca-Cola United. It's not just about volume and profit, it's about creating loyalty, and it's also giving the local customer an attraction. You know, a freestyle machine is a big fun thing for the family. The kids like to make their special blend your own concoctions. Power Automate became a necessity for really solving a supply chain nightmare. We've got 40 plus distribution centers and some of them are close to a million square feet worth huge volumes of product is being moved out of these things. Replenishment of a freestyle machine just did not fit into our supply chain. We had to centralize from that point on. We have a, a very complex 11-step process to place an order. That was really preventing us from rolling it out to the local market. But with Power Automate, RPA, everything is automated from beginning to end. From setting up the receivable to cutting the check for the purchase order and then the shipment, it really doesn't matter how the order is created because we're driving all this from the back end. So there's all kinds of benefits. It's been a huge success in terms of cost savings. It builds a relationship with the consumer and our brand that you can't buy anywhere, you know? I really always like that story because it's such a great representation of the power of the power platform. Now, when you look to the future, there's five main focus areas for low-code development at Microsoft. The first is enterprise trust. How can we make it so you can embrace business users, IT, and developers all working together on this platform without worrying about losing control from a safety, security, and privacy or compliance perspective? And this all starts by making sure we have the right tools for governance, security, and management so you can let creativity flourish, but without burning down the company. Item number two is about AI being everywhere. In the future, every app and every BI report and every workflow and every chat agent needs to be infused with artificial intelligence. That is the expectation. Otherwise, we're just rebuilding the same apps we've had for the last 20 years. So in the Power Platform, we've done a lot of work to make it so AI can effortlessly be used and adopted inside your own solutions. But even what you build can be supported by AI tools and AI-assisted development. Item number three is something called collaborative apps, which I'll we'll spend a decent amount of time on today. It is one of the most exciting changes in how apps and experiences are delivered. With a hybrid work environment and people working remote and first line and office workers having to collaborate, we're at a time of unprecedented digital collaboration. And for that, we need the next generation of applications and solutions to be collaboration ready. And I'll talk about what that means for the Power Platform. Item number four is something called fusion teams. You may have heard the term before. It's about bringing together the professional developers, the IT pros and business users to go work on a single solution. And to do that, we have a bunch of great announcements to build on top of the last 18 months of innovation we've done to bring Azure, GitHub, Visual Studio and Power Platform closer together. And the fifth item is hyper automation. In our current reality of tight supply chains, labor shortages, and a difficulty to go build and create new innovation for all of our customers quickly, it's more important than ever to find ways to automate tasks. And this requires access to data and artificial intelligence and great automation tools. And Power Platform makes it easy to go do that. Um, so these are the five main areas and I wanna go spend a little bit of time walking through them with you today. For the first item I wanna highlight is really about this collaboration, this collaborative app idea. As we all know, modern work depends on teamwork. Teamwork is at the heart and core to how every modern company operates. And the way every team is working is fundamentally changing. COVID-19 accelerated it, and we're never gonna go back to the way it was in 2019. Um, we're in a new world. And to really respond to this new world, we think and we believe at Microsoft that this idea of a collaborative application is going to be at the heart. A collaborative application is something that pulls together all your different data assets from things like Dataverse in the Power Platform or the Microsoft Graph for Office 365 or your dozens or hundreds of other systems that you have in your enterprise and for which we have 500 plus data connectors. You've got to pull all that data together as a seamless fabric across the company. 
then you need to have application experiences on top, which bring users together so they can work inside an application and collaborate and develop solutions and work on tasks and problems in a single environment in a single cockpit. And that's the vision of collaborative apps. Break down the silos between data, break down the silos between people, and then go deliver the right information and the right experiences to the right people at the right time. And when we really go boil that down to three different pillars, we really focus on three main areas of collaborative applications. The first is this idea of business data being available to everyone, everywhere inside the company. You don't have to worry about going to 10 different applications to get a view of a customer or 10 different applications to go execute a workflow. We can bring the business data to the users where they are. And that's inside of Outlook, that's inside of Teams, that's inside of OneNote, in Windows, on your phone, in a bunch of different places. Uh, and really this is about setting things free and the connectors and Dataverse inside of Power Platform make that possible. Item number two is about how do you go make easy communication part of every single application and every single process. Phone calls, meetings, chat, all need to be at your fingertips in every single app, not just in Teams and not just in Office. And so even if you use a line of business solution you've built in Power Apps or you're looking at a Power BI report, you need to be able to effortlessly and easily chat. And the third pillar is about making business applications and solutions you build with Power Platform multiplayer. How do you make it so users can have real-time co-presence and real-time collaboration inside the application when they're looking at the same data? We've all become used to this from Word and Excel and PowerPoint where you can see who else is working on a file with you. Why aren't our business applications, why aren't our low-code solutions the same way? It's time to change that. So across these pillars, across the end user experiences and your data layer, we're bringing things together to make it so the whole company can behave as one. And Teams is the heart of that story, but so is the Power Platform. So to show that in action, I'm just gonna play a quick teaser video. More than ever, businesses are looking for ways to be agile and save time and money. Microsoft Teams is a rich platform for work, offering so much more than just chat, meetings, and calling. With Power Platform in Teams, it's also a place where anyone can develop simple yet powerful low-code solutions that simplify work right within Teams. Power Apps is a low-code app-building platform that lets you easily create, edit, and publish apps directly to Teams, allowing you to simplify work across any device. Now, anyone can benefit from AI-powered, natural language-capable bots made right in Teams. Power Virtual Agents makes chatbots easy to create and scale across your organization. You can automate processes like approvals, reminders, and even robust enterprise-grade workflows using the Power Automate app. And turn your insights into action with a new Power BI app that lets you quickly find, share, and create data visualizations right within Teams. With Teams and Microsoft Power Platform, your opportunities to simplify work are endless, making it easier than ever to bring people together and achieve more. And to make that teaser video a little more concrete, I want to share a great customer story from Telstra. Telstra is one of the world's largest telecommunications companies and operates in Australia and New Zealand. And they've done a marvelous job of bringing together Power Platform and Microsoft Teams to change how their field workers operate, but also how their field workers communicate and collaborate back with corporate and the central office. And there's no better way to see this in action than to see the actual app out in the field. So let's play a short video from Telstra. the biggest changes for our business has been the way that we communicate things out to our technicians. When we looked at the ecosystem for a field technician, there were lots of different applications and systems and links and places to go and get information, having to manage and service all of that. 
it can be quite challenging for them. What we really wanted to do is we wanted to really bring that together into one place for them. Microsoft Teams has been really important to running our field services. We saw this amazing opportunity to integrate Power Apps. We created two platforms, Technician Plus and Leader Plus, linked into Microsoft Teams has made that cohesive experience for our users really has everything. It's more about automating and digitising a lot of those manual processes which were typically done via paper. It's really been an integral part of ensuring that the rest of the technician workforce is up to speed. First thing in the morning, I log onto my tablet, jump onto Technician Plus to make sure I'm across all the new communications and news that is uploaded there daily. Then I travel to my first job. I think the foundations that we laid has really helped create that platform for crisis management, whether it be fires or floods or obviously the most recent pandemic. We have to be quite agile in the way that we develop solutions to be able to manage those. And I spent about seven years in the field servicing our customers. I then transitioned to a role in the field digitisation team. I don't have a typical software engineering or IT background and what the Power Platform has allowed me to do is really develop an application within 48 hours with end-to-end -end reporting. We've automated and digitised around 70 processes. We have visibility of weather warnings and we have meetings on MS Teams daily with our field leads just to ensure our safety before we are mobilising. Technicians will go out to those sites and they'll capture photos through their tablet and then our resource coordinators can visualise that information in a Power BI report. Being in the field, we knew where to go for the updates and communications. It's increased our efficiency dramatically. We can service our customers quicker. Power Platform has helped us get about 10 million minutes back into our business, which has increased the productivity of our people. And I'm really passionate about building that community of problem solvers, seeing those guys out there using the tools that have developed, and it makes you want to provide a better experience. I like resolving customers' issues, and the tools that we've been given definitely improve our experience and the customer's experience. So. Uh, to jump into some of the more specific items from the Telstra demo, I wanted to just share uh, and highlight a few of the main features. The first one being that now inside of Power Apps, when you're looking at a Dataverse record, you can actually see who else is looking at that record, just like you would view inside of an Office document or Office spreadsheet, but you can also embed Team Chat next spring inside of your model-driven application. And this makes it so that you can always know who else is using a Power App with you, and you can even reach out and communicate with those same users who are looking at the same data. And uh, this, what's amazing about this is it took us a very long time to go build such rich collaboration into the Office products, but now every solution you build on the Power Platform can have that same rich collaboration with just a single switch. You can go faster than ever, build new types of applications because of this low-code development environment. Um, and this is just the beginning. The other big one, if I go spend more time on that chat-based experience, is you can really start to see all the associated data, all the associated records with a particular conversation, and you can do that right inside of that Power App or Dynamics instance. Um, and you can do this by having it actually informed based on the context of the data you're looking at, or you can have it informed based on people you talk to most commonly and most frequently on uh, Teams. And when you go message users from inside the Power App, the other users just receive the message right inside their normal Teams client. So if you are spending your whole day in a Power App, you can easily reach out and collaborate and communicate with everybody else in the company, even if they don't use that same Power App. It's a real game changer in terms of how we think about the role of communication in a typical line of business application or workflow. And um, the, between the co-presence on the last slide, you can see who's looking at data, and then you can use this chat to then go launch a chat with who else is looking at the same record inside of your Power App. So amazing end-to-end -end experience there. Additionally, to that earlier aspect of the collaborative apps I talked about, where we wanna make it so business data is available to everybody everywhere, you can now find all of your Dataverse data available inside of Microsoft Search. So if you're a, at the office.com, worldoffice.com, or in SharePoint, or starting next year inside of Microsoft Teams, you'll be able to search just like you look for a document or a PowerPoint and find all the great information you have stored inside your Power App or inside of Dataverse as well. Um, this respects and honors all the security you've configured around Dataverse, and also is something you can set up uh, at a central location to choose which Dataverse environments you want. It's now in preview for Dynamics back Dataverse instances, and by the end of the calendar year of 2021, it will have support for standalone Power Apps Dataverse instances as well. Um, these are all just amazing three big announcements we've done in the last month and a half to really go bring more collaboration to Power Apps. But 
there's more. One of the things that we shared at Ignite 2021 was this idea of context IQ and loops. Loops are actionable micro experiences right embedded inside of Office or Teams inside of every single editor. You can do app mentions of people, but you can now also do app mentions of dataverse data. So you can see and view all the information that you've put, stored from your Power App right inside of these other surface areas. So when your users are spending time in the Office products, which so many do for so much of the time, they don't have to context switch or change browser tabs or anything like that anymore. They now have really effortless, seamless experiences inside of those Office products. And this idea of context IQ is about exposing the right data to the right user and the right canvas at the right time, really made possible um, by that great data fabric I talked about earlier in the collaboration layer from collaborative apps. So a lot of great innovation. This is something that we announced uh, with uh, demos and preview, private previews at Ignite 2021, and we'll roll out more in the first half of 2022. Um, so really exciting stuff here that's being made possible by AI and data access across the entire Power Platform and Office ecosystem. And not related to collaboration, but a major, major uh, area that we've been pushing on as well is this idea of pay as you go for Power Apps licensing. This is something we announced in November 2021 and where it's now possible, in addition to the existing licenses for Power Apps, but you can now connect an Azure subscription to your Power Apps environment and be charged based on the usage of active users and active apps in that environment. And it only gets charged when people actually consume and leverage the app. So you don't have to prepay. You don't have to do complicated procurement. You don't have to do um, the standard big license deal. You can just build it, get value, and get charged for it which everybody's super familiar with from our Azure days as well. So this is what, probably the number one request that we had received for Power Apps, um, and we're super excited to enable it so that all the great features I just talked about around collaboration, Dataverse, there's new, interesting, compelling ways to go pay for it. And um, another big item that I wanna talk about is this idea that uh, you can now write code by example. Um, this is something we've been talking about for a while, which basically we started with our big GPT-3 announcement where you can use natural language to do data queries and data filters earlier this year at Microsoft Build. Um, and that made it so you could easily write PowerFest expressions without having to be an expert. Um, this is the next step of that, something called prose. It's a word winning uh, AI uh, approach where you can now just give examples of data transformations and string permutations and we will automatically generate the PowerFX expressions for you. So you can build amazing applications just by showing the, the computer and Power App Studio what you want to have happen and we'll generate it for you. This is the future of development and lowering the bar so even more people can participate inside of this low code, no code revolution because it's not just about being able to do complex PowerFX expressions, it's just can you describe or show what you want the app to do and we'll build it for you. Um, so a lot more accessibility, a lot more great capabilities coming along down the release. Um, and for this next item, I just wanna spend a quick minute and a half about how Power Platform is combining with the rest of the Microsoft Cloud to provide the complete tool chain for developers. And when we talk about this, it's not just Power Platform, it's not just Azure. It's Power Platform, Azure, GitHub, and Visual Studio four legs to the chair that you need to actually be a modern application developer. You need Azure to go host your code and your infrastructure. You need GitHub for source control and continuous integration, continuous development. You need Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code as your development environment. You need Power Platform for your low code development capabilities and your low code hosting. All four come together to make developers faster than they've ever been before. Uh, and that's a real important item. If we go back to the beginning of the presentation, where there's 500 million new apps that have to be built and there's a 4 million developer shortfall, the only way to get out of it is you have to empower everybody to be a developer, but you also have to make developers move faster. And that's why we talk about this tool chain. And one of the big releases that we have for developers is that it's now possible to export a Power App mobile app as an Android package, which can be submitted to the Android store. And that means you can now use Power Apps to build standalone applications 
which you can publish and use through device or application management. And you can have your own icons and your own logos and your own branding. So for the really important applications, the end users don't even have to know that it's a power app anymore. Um, and we see this is a, one of the other top requests we have from our largest customers who want branded uh, company specific players of the app as well as the launch experience. And you can now do that with this capability. Um, and this is a, one of the big requests from developers because developers never liked having to go deploy and distribute the Power App through the Power Apps player. You don't have to do that anymore. You can now build it in Power Apps and distribute it through your own player and inside the App Store. So big change there for standalone native apps with Power Apps. Additionally, we made it possible so you can now bring your own AI models. So you can build an AI model however you'd like with whichever language, framework, or tooling you want, host it wherever you want, and you can now register it with AI Builder inside the Power Platform. So we have dozens of great out-of-the-box AI models and pre-built models, but you can now add your own. So with, just like you can do everywhere else in the Power Platform, if we don't have a connector for it, you can write code to build your own custom connector. If we don't have a control for it, you can write code to build your own control. If we don't have an AI model for it, you can build your own AI model. No cliffs, even for the AI and ML capabilities. So lots of great cap uh, capabilities and functionality for pro devs out there. And for the last section, I really just want to talk about enterprise trust, such an important area for our customers. When you talk about the three pillars of trust for the Power Platform, it's about secure, monitor, and manage. And it's been these same few pillars for a while now. But we just keep adding more and more features to security, more and more features to monitoring, and more and more features to manage. And let me tell talk about a few of the brand new capabilities that we've launched. First is it's now possible to create Azure Active Directory conditional access policies on specific individual Power Apps. So you can harness the full potential of AAD conditional access for each individual Power App and not just all of your Power Apps together. This, just like that standalone mobile app, makes it so more and more and more you don't have to compromise on what you want as a developer just because you happen to be using a low code tool. So conditional access, uh, standalone players, everything else make it so you really can have a full fledged end to end experience that's secure and robust. Second item is there's now the ability to quarantine non compliant apps based on data loss prevention policies. Apps end up quarantined and can no longer be played until action is taken by the admin or the maker. Uh, and this makes it so that um, you can basically institute your policies and make sure people aren't violating them and people aren't running apps which don't align with what you want to enable from a central IT organization perspective. And the third and last announcement I want to share is the new Power Platform Adoption Guidance to help on that journey from going small to big when it comes to low-code adoption, how you can create guardrails and policies and DLP uh, rules, as well as how you can create a center of excellence to go nurture and engage everybody to become a low-code developer. And these are just three of the most recent announcements around Enterprise Trust. There's dozens and dozens of more announcements in the last three months as well. And it all boils down to we want to make it easy for people to get started building. We want to make it easy for devs, IT pros, and business users to collaborate as they build those solutions. They want to make it easy to secure and manage what your company is creating. Because if you don't do that, it kind of all falls apart. So these things all fit together very nicely um, to build a really amazing low code platform story across the entire Power Platform. And with that, I just want to say thank you again for having me at the Power Platform French Summit. It's been an honor and I'm incredibly grateful that you took the time to learn more about the Power Platform and you stayed all the way through all these different sessions and learned all this great content about the Power Platform. I look forward to connecting again in the future and I'm sure 12 months from now there'll be even more exciting, great capabilities. So hopefully we'll talk again. Have a good rest of the day.